What is up everybody, Dak here, and today I'm going to be talking about not the difference between these two speakers, but the difference between these two enclosure types, which is sealed or acoustic suspension and infinite baffle. So first off, why do speakers need boxes? Here's an example of a speaker, just free air, and if we put a bit of power into it, the cone will move forward. What happens when the cone moves forward? It creates a slight increase in pressure at the front of it. Now this high pressure when in free air comes around the back and fills in this void created low pressure when the cone moves forward away from this area. So that's not very good as it cancels out a lot of the sound from a driver. Now I'll be showing exactly why using these. Part of my explanation for how these enclosures work are going to involve these two or these set of arrows right here. These set of arrows represent a sine wave right here where red's high pressure and blue's low pressure and green's around standard atmospheric pressure. Shorter lines represent waves with a shorter wavelength which are higher frequency. Longer lines represent longer wavelengths which is lower frequency. So if we play a slightly higher frequency you can see here now that when a red line's formed at the front of the driver a blue line's formed at the rear. But just a second ago there was a green at the rear and before that there was red at the rear. So by the time this red gets around to the front it's actually in phase with the driver. And it adds. So speakers playing above a certain point can actually output just fine. But below that, low frequencies, there's this cancellation. So how do we reduce this cancellation and improve bass? Well you put a baffle on it. Just by increasing the distance from the rear of the driver to the front, you've now actually got the ability to play lower frequencies without the cancellation occurring so quickly. So, and these are represented as you can see by longer arrows. But, what if you want to go even deeper? Well, of course, extend the baffle. Infinitely. <laughs> so now you can see that these arrows are just fine, there's no cancellation going on, and we can in fact make them a bit longer. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> now we can see that we're really getting the low frequencies out, compared to the short distances before, We've now got much longer frequencies without any cancellation going on. So this right here, this baffle, you can call it an infinite baffle. But of course an infinite baffle is not very convenient as infinity is a bit hard to reach. So what we do is we actually fold the baffle around on itself and form an infinite baffle enclosure. So the basic premise of an infinite baffle enclosure is waves from the rear of the driver can't cancel out waves from the front of the driver, allowing them to play very low frequencies. But of course they're not truly infinite, so it does come at a cost. A back pressure occurs at low frequencies, very low frequencies sometimes, and this back pressure resists the driver moving in and moving out, and it's said to dampen the driver just add a bit of resistance to the movement of the driver. Smaller enclosures damp the movement more because the air is getting squished more and getting expanded more and it resists it more. Now this air can also act like a spring or an artificial stiffness, increasing the resonance of the driver, which is why they're called, which is why smaller enclosures are called acoustic suspension, as they add a bit of stiffness and they add a bit of damping, so they kind of act like the suspension of a driver, the spider of a driver. So now we're going to be getting a bit technical and we're going to be having a look at QTS and QTC. Now these are three letters but a bit of a nuisance. Hopefully I can explain them in a way that anyone can understand. But basically QTS and QTC describe damping. As I said before, damping is just a cone resistance to movement. So it's if you're playing a tone and you suddenly stop playing the tone it's kind of how quickly it stops moving. So the QTS is a driver's natural damping in free air, and the QTC is a speaker's natural damp or damping inside an enclosure. QTC is always greater than QTS as enclosure adds damping, it can't reduce damping. Even in a ported box playing below tuning frequency, it's easier for a free air driver, the air to get around the front and the back than it is to get squished through a port and around the front. So QTC is always greater than QTS. Smaller enclosures damp more, so the smaller enclosure, the larger the QTC value will be. Speaker QTS values typically from 0.2 being very low damping to 1 being quite a bit of damping. Most drivers or most subwoofers tend to be from 0.3 to 0.5. 
Although I have noticed some car subs can be up to a QTS of 1, which is quite high. But yeah, enclosure QTC values are a bit more complex, as enclosures can only increase the QTS. Say you've got a 0.8 QTS driver, you can't put it in a box and have a QTC of 0.7. No matter how big it is, even if you've got a huge water tank with a driver of 0.8 QTS in it, it's not going to have a QTC of less than 0.8. Most enclosures have a QTC greater than 0.5, as 0.5 is quite underdamped. So subs can suffer from overexcursion, where they move too much at very low frequencies. Subsonic filters are required for these subs or other attenuation or roll-offs. About the lowest common QTS value for a sealed enclosure is 0.577 as when it's with a really big low resonance driver it'll have low damping on the driver which allows it to efficiently reproduce very low frequencies. Now I note here that they also have low group delay but I found out shortly after I made this that they in fact can have higher group delay. QTCs of 0.7 are considered ideal, or 0.707 to be precise, which is the square root of 2 divided by 2, as they're kind of a balance between low QTC and high QTC. Low QTC drivers tend to perform better at transients, rather than having low group delay, and QTCs higher than 0.7 perform better for tones, so 0.7 is considered an ideal compromise. It's kind of a middle ground where you're not sacrificing either one. Enclosures with a QTC of above 0.7 or around 1 are more suited to producing tones. So they're more efficient and often used in things such as car SPL where often the loudest cars will have a fourth order bandpass with the driver in a tiny sealed enclosure just to get a really high Q and have a really high efficiency peak to get the greatest SPL number. And just quickly I'm going to talk about VAS. You can read this if you want, but in that essence a speaker with all the specs roughly the same and a 40 litre VAS is going to need a box twice as large to have the same QTC as the same driver with a 20 litre VAS or equivalent driver with a 20 litre VAS. If their QTSs are the same and their VASs are different, their ideal boxes are going to be are most likely going to be the same difference between the VASs ratios out. If you want to learn more about what the VAS really means, you can watch my choosing the right subwoofer video, and I'll put a link in the description. So what is the difference between infinite baffle and sealed? So it's a bit subjective as the only difference is the volume of the box and the drive you put in it does play a factor. But since it's only a small difference, I'd like to put down my opinion on it. Sealed drivers, pretty well you can put any box into them. This is very typical when somebody makes a sub box. If they don't know the specs, you put it in a sealed box, it'll just work. So any sub can be put into a sealed box. They typically have a QTC of 0.707 up, as most likely if you put just any old 12 inch into a one cubic foot sealed box, it's going to be more damping, or it's going to be a bit smaller than could be ideal for the sub. So typically the enclosure volume in an acoustic suspension is smaller than the VAS of a driver. Infinite Baffle uses higher QTS drivers of around 0.45 to 0.7 specifically, as remember above 0.7 can't be put into a 0.7 enclosure as it'll end up being higher than 0.7 and 0.5 is low natural damping and if the natural damping is too low then it might not be ideal for putting in a large box as over excursion can easily occur. So. That's why it's usually this band right here, and the QTC usually ends up being between that 0.577 and 0.707. These boxes are also generally bigger than the VAS. Now to compare the enclosures, I'm going to be using two very similar subs, both VAS 60 litres and resonance frequency of 20 hertz, but one of them has a QTS of 0.35, which is low damping, and the other has a QTS of 0.6, which is high damping. 
So here are the full specs. Uh, the green ones are values I put in and all the blue ones were WinISD natural, just calculating them to fill in the blanks essentially. So as I said before, QTS 0.35 and 0.6. I also made them 15 inch drivers and 500 watts each with 15 millimeters of one-way Xmax each. So here are the frequency response graphs. Now this is a transfer function magnitude, so it's just relative response. And you can see here that this infinite baffle has a lot more down low than the green acoustic suspension. The only difference, remember, is the QTS values. This one having a low QTS, this one having a high QTS. And as WinISD likes to have the QTC of around 0.7, a low QTS sub has a much smaller box. This one's about a third of the VAS, and a high QTC driver needs a much bigger volume as it's only going from 0.6 to 0.7. So the box can't provide much damping to increase the QTC by 0.1, which is why it ends up being around triple the VAS. So you can see there's a huge difference in enclosure volume right here. But as I said before, acoustic suspensions tend to be a bit more efficient. So that's why we're going to have a look at maximum SPL. Now you can see here it's 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 hertz up. In fact, the acoustic suspension is in fact louder than the infinite baffle. But you can see the infinite baffle has a lot more down low. So it's, it's almost as if its total output is more, but the acoustic suspension is peakier. It's focused up higher. Now also you might have noticed that right here the line goes from a curve to straight. And what's up with that? So right here is the maximum power handling. You can see that the acoustic suspension, as it's damped more, can handle more power without over, -excur over excursion. It's all nice and linear right through its response. But the infinite baffle here, right around 17 hertz, starts to get choked off. Now it's starting to run into its maximum excursion and it needs to have the power to the driver reduced, otherwise it could start to be non-linear. Now I'd say most people running an infinite baffle enclosure are trying to go for sound quality, so they don't really want any non-linear motions from the driver. So a smooth roll off is preferred to just letting the driver go into over excursion. Now from what I was aware before, really looking at this graph here, I thought the infinite baffle had a lower group delay, but in fact the acoustic suspension has a lower group delay, and this does actually make a bit of sense, as a lot of people swear by sealed acoustic suspension subwoofers for, for aiding their low frequencies from, say, a stereo sub setup, set up with their stereo speakers, just to get a bit more low end out of them before having to go to a single low frequency subwoofer unit. So you can see here that the acoustic suspension has lower group delay and that means it's a lot tighter. The sounds arrive at the same time, should be able to hold a lot more definition without any sloppiness in the sound. Whereas the infinite baffle starts to have a bit more sloppiness up here, but down here it's mostly rumbles so that shouldn't matter too much anyway. And as I mentioned before, large ported boxes can have up to 40 millisecond delay which is all the way up here. I've seen 40 milliseconds in some of the simulations I've done. And another thing I'll point out just quickly is the resonance. So you can see this one here, the ideal acoustic suspension is about a third of its VAS and it's almost doubled the resonance frequency of the driver. You can see that it's now tuning right here, which is around 42 Hertz. And the infinite baffle on the other hand, from 20 Hertz to 23.6, it's barely been affected. It's also much higher, which is an indicator that the speaker's moving more freely, hence why it's got so much more output at those low frequencies. So, to summarize, infinite baffles uh, don't actually have lower grip that I ignore that, but they do have a flatter frequency response, lower resonance frequency, and better transient response. But they are very large and they're picky for their drivers. I'll go into this in a second. And acoustic suspension are uh, compact can suit virtually any driver, pretty well any speaker, will perform better if you put it in any box, rather than just running it free air. Uh, more efficient than infinite baffle, have a higher power handling, as the low frequencies 
don't need to be attenuated but they don't do those low frequencies quite as well and they have a peakier output and now just a quick discussion or just talking about a couple topics uh, drivers with a QTS of around 0.5 have the same ideal sealed volume as their VAS so they kind of sit in a zone where the VAS of the driver is not smaller than the ideal infinite baffle or larger than the ideal sealed enclosure so I'd consider these the middle ground this is the turning point above 0.5 would generally be more ideal for an infinite baffle unless you're willing to sacrifice the low frequency output of the driver and put it into a an acoustic suspension setup and below 0.7 should just mainly be put into an acoustic suspension setup unless you want a really low QTC for a really smooth flat frequency response down low but make sure the driver has very good excursion. Another thing to mention is often drivers are put in isobaric. As I mentioned before, a speaker with half the VAS only requires half the ideal sealed enclosure. So if you put two speakers face to face, why one backwards so they're both working together? That pair of speakers in series actually has half the VAS of either one of the speakers by itself. So if you get two 40 litre VAS speakers, or I'll use an example before, two speakers which have a QTS of 0.6 and they've both got that 60 litre VAS, then instead of having to put one driver into a 180 litre box, you can get a second driver mounted to the face of the other one, wire it backwards, or just, just have them working together in some form, as long as one driver is pushing against the cone of the other driver instead of in parallel, then the VAS is halved. So then instead of needing a 180 litre box, you can use a 90 litre box and get the same effects. So this is why isobaric setups are used to get really small infinite baffle enclosures. For example, my Lin isobaric Saras. So yeah, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you learnt something about Infinite Baffle and Sealed and possibly helped you make a choice as to which enclosure type you're going to. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to leave a like and possibly subscribe for more similar videos. Also, uh, leave a comment if you've got anything to mention. Maybe you've got a different opinion. That's always fine. As I said, this topic is a bit subjective. So there's no wrong opinions unless it is just completely wrong. But yep, thanks for watching. See ya.